Welcome everyone. So in this video, I want to discuss a uh, recent interview that Dr. Taylor Marshall did with Dr. Ed Mazza on May 27th, 2020. And it, it's in regards to the papacy and did Pope Benedict XVI fully resign the papacy or was it just the office of Bishop of Rome? Now, I, for one, ever since 2013 when the resignation happened, I believe that there's something fishy about the resignation. Can, couldn't put my hand on it. Father Gruner, there was a video of Father Gruner uh, that said that he, that he claimed when he was in Rome that whatever um, Benedict resigned, it wasn't the papacy. And I wish I could find out to show it to you, but... Um, that's regardless. We got, we have enough evidence now that there's doubt, and I think I have enough information to point to where the key to unraveling that question is. Now, when this video, I was listening to this video when I was driving, and I tried to comment uh, on the comments to let them know about this one topic in relation to the resignation but nobody would uh there was no it didn't catch probably you know thousands of comments flying through but i'm doing this video specifically in hopes that somebody would bring this information to dr marshall and dr maza or if someone else has more they can add because i frankly i don't have that much time on my hands but the information i did do a research on I ran into a, a block and I'm going to tell you what that is but if you haven't seen this video I recommend you do I think there's Dr. Ed Maz is on to something that's very important and I think Dr. Taylor Marshall senses the same but he's not quite there and he's probably where I was a few months ago in relation to did Benedict XVI resign properly and I have come to believe that he not only did not resign the papacy, but that he truly did only resign the bishop of um, bishop of Rome office. And now we need to be able to prove that one way or another, so that you can get it clarified. Now, I'm going to read to you the the resignation letter in English, and it's. You can tell just by the wording there's something missing there so here it is quote for this reason and well aware of the seriousness of this act with full freedom i declare that i renounce the ministry of bishop of rome successor of saint peter entrusted to me by the cardinals on 19th of april 2005 in such a way that as from the 20th of february 2013 at 20 hundred hours the See of Rome, the See of St. Peter, will be vacant, and a conclave to elect the new Supreme Pontiff will have to be convoked by those whose competence it is. Unquote. Now, I'm just, I just want to say something. I don't know what it is about since Vatican II, but the, the term in such a way has got to stop. That means nothing. There's nothing more vague that in such a way. What way? It's, it's in documents all over the place. Stop it. Stop writing in such a way. Tell us what way it is. But anyway, I digress. So anyway, that's where he renounced the Bishop of Rome. But, you know, the interesting part is, of course, up here in the, uh, at the beginning, he's talking about the exercise of the Petrine ministry. Well, define Petrine ministry. I mean, which one is it? See, this document is contradictory in itself from start to finish. And the fact that at the end, and this is probably one thing that I would probably like to say as far as to Dr. Taylor Marshall, which I happen to respect quite a bit, is regardless, even though he's, he's calling on convoking a um, conclave, it's irrelevant. 
that that's not a declaration of anything. He's just saying that it, it'll have to be, but I don't think that means anything. Just because he says he's a a, a um, conclave will have to be convened, well, big deal. You could, if he was insane and said that it wouldn't mean anything. The fact is, when he he renounced the bishop of Rome, and then that was it. I mean, that's what he says he renounced. He didn't renounce anything else. Now, a t the Pope has many titles. He is the Vicar of Christ. He is the Primate of Italy. He is the um, Servant of the Servants of God. He is the Bishop of Rome. He is uh, St. Peter's successor. I mean, he has a lot of titles. right? And one thing that uh, I liked what Dr. Taylor Marshall pointed out was uh, he... St. Peter was Pope before he was Bishop, you know. So what I did here is I'm going to show you what I think is a key to figuring this out. Now, I'm not saying it is one way or another, but I think there's a key to it. But I haven't been able to find one little aspect, of, and I'm asking for those of you that are listening. I mean, my channel is so heavily censored by YouTube, I doubt this video will even get 10 views. But... If anyone out there has access to Taylor Marshall, Dr. Taylor Marshall, and Dr. Ed Mazza, see if you can get this information to them. Okay? I know they're busy, but I think it's important. The key to figuring out whether Pope Benedict XVI resigned the Bishop of Rome or the papacy, or both, is the Avignon papacy. Now, for those of you that have never heard of the Avignon Papacy? It is a, a period in the church in the 1300s where the papacy moved from Rome to Avignon, France. Now, I'm not going to get into the details. If you want to find out about all that, do it. But the question that has to be brought up is if that papacy resided in Avignon, France for 60 plus years, who was the Bishop of Rome? during that time who was doing or fulfilling the duties as the bishop of rome because a bishop has many duties very important duties um, they consecrate you know churches they normally do the uh, confirmations they uh, confer holy orders on the priests for that diocese that's the bishop's responsibility uh, all the different duties who was doing all of that as the bishop of the diocese in Rome when the papacy was in Avignon? Now, this is the part that is interesting. If I found on uh, on uh, the Ministry of Truth website, otherwise known as Wikipedia, a list of all the bishops of Avignon, France. Right. So if you scroll back up here. Archdiocese of Avignon. Okay, and you've got the bishops list. And when we get down here to the mid 1300s, which is when the papacy was over in Avignon, we have a list. So just like, uh, let's see here. Let's start with. Now let's start with Clement the Sixth. So Clement VI was 1349 to 1352. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Here they have a 1342 to 1352. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. Well, we'll use Innocent VI. Innocent VI, 1352 to 1362. He was the Bishop of Avignon during the exact same time he was The Pope. So the question now has to be asked: Is the is he the bishop of both Avignon and the bishop of Rome and Pope? Because I understand, and I admit, correct me if I'm wrong. Let's just put it in the comments. But a bishop, you can only have one bishop in a diocese, right? So that's why you have auxiliary bishops, you know, the helpers. You can only have one bishop in a diocese. Inversely, a diocese 
Or a bishop can only have one diocese. A bishop cannot have two dioceses. So there's a problem here. So the question has to be asked, who was the bishop in Rome? Because when the papacy was in Avignon, because I mean, we're talking about 60 plus years. Who did all the bishop's duties for 60 plus years in Rome? And I think if you, and there's no list that I could find online. I could not find a list of the, um, the bishops in Rome because they all assume that they're, they're the popes. But for 60 years, there was no bishop there. The bishop was somewhere else. Who did all the administrative work? Who did all the clerical work? Who did all the spiritual guidance of the diocese if there's no bishop? So if that answer, if that question can be answered, I think you're going to be able to find that if it was actually true that there was another bishop in Rome during the time that the Avignon papacy was going on, then Pope Benedict's the 16th resignation means that he only resigned the Bishop of Rome position, not the papacy. Now, on the other hand, if you could find that they were he was bishop of two different dioceses, the Pope was bishop of two different dioceses at the same time, well, then that presents a problem. I just can't see how that would work. That's logistically impossible, especially in that time. The Pope, could, the Pope could not go back and forth on an airplane in the 1300s. That, that trip would have taken weeks, if not months. So, the question lies, who was the Bishop of Rome during the Avignon Papacy? And if that answer, or that question can be answered, I think you have the key to figuring out if the, if the Bishop of Rome is attached to to the papacy if they're one and the same because personally from what I can see they're two separate uh, offices so anyway this is all I have very simple little video um, please pass it on to Dr. Taylor Marshall and Dr. Ed Maza if you can if anybody has access to them I doubt they watch any of my videos on here but that is the key you got to find out if there's historical evidence for one or the other and if you can nail this one down you've got your answer